far advanced. <clears throat> As you know, you know, C. diff uh, happens in part due to an imbalance or dysbiosis of the gut microbiota. Uh, fecal microbiota transplantation has been going on for 4,000 years, age-old story, literally. Uh, and the first one being done in, in America in 1958 with Dr. Eisenman, a surgeon. And now we've seen this revolution in fecal transplant therapy uh, with 90% cures or greater. Right now, the official paradigm treatment paradigm for C. diff is antibiotics. We know that antibiotics may be part of that problem. They may potentiate C. diff by killing C. diff temporarily, but preventing the growth and recolonization of helpful protective colonies to keep C. diff as a spore. Now we're getting to the point where whole stool transplant is very inexpensive, and from what we can tell, very safe, but we don't have longitudinal data to know what the untold risks might be. Now, the science has gotten to the point where there are uh, pharmaceutical companies that have dedicated themselves to mining the microbiome for therapeutic targets. Some microbial uh, peptides have been, uh, antimicrobial peptides have been developed that play a role in constipation, uh, that play a role in actually inflammatory bowel disease, clostridial clusters, that may be therapeutic uh, in IBD. And these serve as examples where we are going to start to develop certain uh, colonies uh, of bacteria or spores that might be helpful. Um, one company recently, Series Health, uh, has developed a uh, proprietary capsule of uh, four capsules of strains that are beneficial and helpful uh, to patients. This is uh, great phase two trial data, but phase three data is still ongoing, so the word's not out yet. But we'll get to the point where we're going to have designer, if you will, systemic, you know, multi-strain uh, special uh, colonies that we can give our patients. And I think that's where a lot of medicine may, may go towards, you know, in, in, in the future, future being 15, 20 years. You know, part of your doctor's visit when you go, they're going to do a physical exam, listen to you, I hope. Hopefully doctors still listen in the future. And uh, they'll take a urine sample, a blood sample, and maybe a buckle swab for your DNA, and maybe a stool sample. And part of your treatment will not be just diet and exercise and maybe a medicine, but possibly some type of more sophisticated probob probiotic, if you will, that helps modulate your chronic illness. I think that's where we may get to in the future. So we're talking about personalized therapy. Um, and I think that's a very tricky thing. I think that's where we all want to go. We know we need to go there. We know that hepatic metabolism and so many different CYP450 enzymes, and let alone that, then the pharmacokinetics of the individual, et cetera, pose many, many boundaries towards truly personalized medicine. But there will be a time where we do that. Take, for instance, IBD is very complicated. It's you know five to at max 20% is genetic. We believe the rest, the 80%, is probably all environmental. The most recent literature suggests that if you do specialized biopsies in inflamed mucosa and run certain types of genetic tests and microbial tests, you can demonstrate both genetic and bacterial signatures that prognosticate response to therapy. So part of the problem really is finding the right biomarkers. If genetics is not the whole thing, finding the right biomarkers that help predict response to drug uh, either in real time or pre-exposure to the biologic. So I think that's a challenging field, a complicated answer, but I think it's just to take more trial and error and experimentation.